We can have more than one episode called Pharmacon. What are you talking about? Yeah, okay, we can do that. It's fine. And if it's in Greek letters, it's like different. <laughs> yeah, then it's fine. It's different. Hello and welcome to the second bonus episode of Homestuck the Internet's Ulysses. I'm your co-host Kira, resident crustacean boy, because I'm wearing a crab onesie. You can find me at K-I-Y-Y-E on Tumblr and Patreon and K-I-Y-Y-E-S on Instagram. And I'm your co-host Jamie, resident translation and interpretation minor. You can find me at jamietamar.wordpress.com and on Instagram as jamietamar. That's J-A-I-M-E-T-A-M-A-R. And I had to actually look at the spelling to spell it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know my own name. Yeah, apparently you don't know your own name. I can spell mine just fine. I got the one extra letter in the weird, the weird vowel order and it just throws everything off. Yeah, mine's pretty easy. So, yeah, the, the episode we have slated for you today is a quick discussion of some folks we interviewed at Anime Boston, which is an anime convention in Boston, in case you couldn't tell from the name. <laughs> <laughs> is that a heavy-handed attempt at nominative determinism? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, everything is just an aptronym now. <laughs> if it's like a convention named after the place and subject, that's just an aptronym now. Yeah, so we're going to play those quotes and talk about them. And we also have a fandom demographic survey that we put out before we did the podcast to sort of, like, gauge interest and stuff, and we haven't talked about it yet. So we're going to talk about that. And we're getting out the episode a week late because we had prom last week, and I was moving home from college, and we didn't have time to read, and also we're just lazy. Yeah. But we awesome. will have a regularly scheduled reading episode next week, so there's going to be two weeks in a row of episodes. Yes. Make up for the three weeks of no episode. Yes, you're very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, and then I'm going to talk about my, I wrote my final paper for an actual real college class on Is Homestuck the Internet's Ulysses, which is my Irish Lit class, which I'm now all done with, which is kind of sad, because it was a really good class. Yeah. Um, oh no, how are you going to be the Ulysses expert anymore if you're not in that class? I just suddenly know absolutely nothing about Ulysses because I'm not in the class anymore. I've forgotten everything I ever knew. Oh no, what are, who are the characters again in Ulysses? Something about Vriska? <laughs> <laughs> you want to start with the A-B quotes? Yeah. So speaking of uh, Ulysses, we basically went into this asking people, have you heard the claim that Homestuck is the Internet's Ulysses? And then we were like, have you heard oh. of Ulysses? Yeah, do you know what Ulysses is? And everyone was like, lol, no. <laughs> and then we discussed Homestuck a bit. And it's like, you know, fandom impact. Yeah, well, one of the interesting things that, that well, one of the things I found interesting, one of our questions we had was, um, what do you think is the impact of Homestuck on media? What do you think, what was the question you wanted, like, what do you think is the impact of, like, Homestuck on, like, m media, like, well, internet, internet media? media I mean, it okay. literally changed the shape of, of like, so conventions culture. and everything. Like, so there so were so true. many of us, and, like, when the earlier than, like, 2012, when it was popular, that we flooded conventions. Like, one of the big reasons you're not allowed to, like, attack hug people or anything like that is because of Homestuck's and unsealed body paint. Yeah. Which so is, like, right. the famous thing. Sorry, right. I, just, I read a lot on the internet. I <laughs> Me know too, man. <laughs> yeah, so it, it seemed like a lot of uh, what people at the con knew about in terms of Homestuck's impact on media, I did quotations around that, is how it's impacted fandom culture and con culture, uh, which is, of course, great and valid, but we didn't get as much analysis on its impact on literature, which is just interesting because that's what our podcast is. It's a literature podcast. Yeah. We we learned that a lot of people on the internet talk about Homestuck's impact on fandom culture, and a lot of people at Anime Boston have read those people on the internet talking about Homestuck impacting fandom culture. <laughs> yeah. The first group we talked to was a group of people in Homestuck cosplay, which was really surprising because it was literally, like, was it the weekend of 413? No. It was a weekend after. Yes, weekend after. It was a weekend after 413, and we were like, the epilogues would come out, like, everyone's going to be in Homestuck cosplay. And then, like, we found, like, one group of Homestucks, and we were like, 
wow, that's kind of, like, it was just really weird. And then the second group we talked to was a group of our friends who we knew had read Homestuck. I think one or two of them were in Homestuck cosplay, though. Yeah, and and keep in mind, this is the weekend that the epilogues came out, and most people we were talking to, I think, had read them, but I had not read them yet, because on purpose, I was like, I want to, like, sit down and absorb. I don't want to, like, try to read them while I'm trying to be present at the convention. So if if it sounds like there's still life left in my voice and the audio recordings and there isn't any more you know why <laughs> another and I'm, I'm reading through like the tags another thing that someone said it was interesting we asked um have you heard the claim that homestuck is the internet's ulysses yes, yes. like the modern yeah. epic yes. yes right okay what do you think of that what do you think about that i mean it's valid like dante's inferno has got this whole big following and it's like dante's self-insert with all his favorite characters yeah that's really good Oh, good comparison, yeah. It's true. Of such so sure is long enough to be one, to be honest. So, like, yeah. yeah, and it also fits, like, all of the different categories of an epic as well, which I think is pretty interesting. So, yes, I think so, if it's an inscription. That was a pretty valid literary comparison, I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the comparison between Ulysses and um, Divine Comedy is very interesting, because there's definitely a lot of overlap there in terms of, like, you know, being obsessed with Greek epics and stuff. But Greek fan fiction, but it's Greek not fan, fan fiction. fiction. Yeah, but it's definitely a different scenario because there's a lot of century gap there. Between what? Inferno and... Between Divine Comedy being written. Yeah, between Inferno being written and Ulysses being written. like And kind of Homestuck too, but like that's less than 100 years after Ulysses. Yeah. Which is weird to think about. <laughs> yeah, very weird actually. <laughs> one of the, one of the kind of like sad things that happened, Kira, you asked, um, what do you guys think Homestuck, like, means for the future of internet media? Well, it's over, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ulysses has been over for a really long time, but still going. A lot of things have been over for a really long time and are still going. Yeah. Any Greek thing, pretty much. Any Greek thing, pretty much. In fact, Ulysses is testament to Greek things keeping on going on. Keeping on going on, episode title. <laughs> Greek things keeping on going on. <laughs> when we were talking about um, fandom culture, there was a the comparison to like Caliborn and Calliope that was really cute. You know, yeah. Let's like Caliborn and Calliope. Calliope is like the dude who draws good fan art and does cosplay. Yes. And then Caliborn's like the guy who's like Homestuck sucks. Yeah, that was interesting because. I think, I don't know if Hussey has said this, but I think it's pretty clear that a lot of the Dancestor trolls are kind of poking fun at fandom archetypes. Like, I think that's just kind of what they're supposed to be a little bit, judging by when he created them and why he created them. So it's interesting taking Caliborn and Calliope through that lens, too. And, you know, Calliope is so creative and generative, and she's uh, also amazing and a queen. And Caliborn is just kind of terrible and shits on things all the time. And it's like, hey, look. It's kind of what fandom's like sometimes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So wait, if Caliborn equals bad side of fandom, and Caliborn is Lord English, and the Hussy is Lord English. Oh! <laughs> it circles back around and bites him in the ass. Hussy dunked on himself. <laughs> <laughs> is that a thing from the epilogues, or are you just extrapolating? No, I'm just extrapolating. But he, he dunks on himself all the time, so I'm sure that was a, at least a little bit planned. Did he, where did he say he was Lord English? There's sure. somewhere, there's somewhere where it's confirmed that he's Lord English. Who knows where? It might have been in Theater of Cruelty, and I'm misremembering. <laughs> <laughs> well, Theater of Cruelty is canon, so. Yes, of course. Theater of Cruelty is more canon than the epilogues, from what uh, I've heard. I just want to let y'all know on the podcast that yesterday we had a great idea for a um, convention. <laughs> and it's, and it's um, just about obscure Dirk works. Such as Cruelty <laughs> or Detective Pony, um, and it's called Pharmacon. <laughs> <laughs> is that Con with a C? Yeah, Con with a C. Wait, I'm gonna look it up and see if it already exists. It probably is like a convention for Big Pharma. Welcome to Pharmacon. We are a unique integrated communications and consultancy company fully focused on marketing healthcare products and services. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's a it's a convention for Big Pharma. <laughs> we'll make our own Pharmacon. We'll spell it in Greek letters, so it's not the same. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love everything spelled in Greek letters. <laughs> Episode title. 
<laughs> the episode title has to be spelled in Greek letters then. <laughs> oh yeah, it'll be Pharmacon spelled in Greek letters. Didn't we already name an episode after Pharmacon though? Um, I think the last one was Onomatopoeias of the Pharmacon. Oh yeah, fuck. <laughs> we can have more than one episode called Pharmacon. What are you talking about? Yeah, okay, we can do that. It's fine. And if it's in Greek letters, it's like different. <laughs> yeah, then it's fine. It's different. Okay, let's talk about... Want to talk about the survey? Yeah. All right, let's bop over to the demographic survey. Where is that? Where do I... What is... It's in the Hachu folder. Cool. I don't think we have it typed up, like, you know, statistics. 88 responses. 88 responses. It's very brisk of you, Mr. Survey. <laughs> <laughs> so, first question was, how many times have you read Homestuck? And we found that 36% of people, which was the majority slice of the pie graph... Uh, had read it once and then some. So, like, once and then you reread the intermission, like, four times or something. I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> or, like, or I, I imagine it's people who read it once and then were like, I'm going to read it again. And then they got through Act 1 and were like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Or, like, once, but you reread the Alpha Kids arc, like, four times because you just love them. Um, and then some people had read it once all the way through. Some people had read it just about once, a.k.a. skipped the intermission. S- twice, three times, four times. Six times, seven times. One person has read it eight or more times and also has read Ulysses. And uh, don't worry, we're going to get this person as a guest on our podcast. <laughs> if you're listening, we're, this is a formal invitation. <laughs> if you're listening, shoot us an email. You can be on the podcast. You've read them more than we have. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then we asked people whether they'd read Ulysses, and uh, 88% of people had not. <laughs> <laughs> and then two people had read it. Yeah, two people read it all the way. Eight people read a little bit. Only two people read Ulysses all the way. 34% of people had heard the comparison, Homestuck is like the internet's Ulysses. Me, and 39. Oop, 39. I can't read. 39% of people. Yes. And 24% of people were like, I don't know, maybe I've heard that. And then 36% of people were like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I didn't realize before we started the podcast, like, I thought that, like, it was a thing that everyone said. And then in all my, like, research and, like, promotion for the podcast on, like, Reddit, everyone was just like, oh, people only say that because the Idea Channel guy. And I was like, wait, really? And I feel like it was kind of just him. Yeah, no, I think it was just him. But then I think a lot of articles picked it up because it just rhetorically sounds kind of nice. Yeah, and then Hussey talked about it. Yeah, and so then it just kind of, the phrase got tossed around, but I I do think it was the Ideas Channel guy that, like, kind of started it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and then we asked people when they started reading Homestuck. Pretty broad distribution. Most people started in 2014. There's a good chunk in 2013, good chunk in 2015, good chunk in 2016. Two people started reading all the way back in 2009. Wow, can you imagine? Can you imagine? So then our next question was, what do you think makes Homestuck unique? And people said a lot of shit. So here are some reasons why people think Homestuck is unique. The bullfuckery. (laughs) Long, weird, undying. (laughs) I feel like you could make a lot of innuendo about that. I was just, that's what I just did. (laughs) Um... Let's see, the media used to create it and the world building, combining multiple medias, wide range of characters, but it says wide rank of characters, <laughs> which is a big mood. This one, I like where it says um, the wide range of characters that are all very well thought out and have their own references and meanings behind them, but at the same time, they come across as one big shit post because yes. I feel like, kind of same with Ulysses, hot take. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Lots of, like, use of media. Yeah, and then a lot of, like, doesn't take itself itself too seriously, but is still really good, like... I like response 37, lunk boy. <laughs> lunk boy. I like uh, response number 27, characters grow exponentially, and also gay. <laughs> and also, colon, gay. <laughs> um... The characters and their reactions to the situations they're put in. Sounds like Ulysses to me. (laughs) Sounds like literature in general, but okay. (laughs) (laughs) It's P. Nifty. It's P. Nifty. Pretty nifty. Homestuck is pretty nifty. A lot about world building. 
So it looks like what people love most about Homestuck is the creative use of media, the characters, the gayness, and the world building. So, um... Oh, I'm the person that wrote Lonk Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love response number 37, Lonk Boy is your own response. <laughs> I guess I'm consistent. I just liked it where it says, please enter your email, Tumblr, or other social media. And I, I put, your friendly neighborhood milk toast hoopy fruit thinks your podcast is a dumb idea. Orange heart. <laughs> and it's like an orange heart in the little... The Discord of- way. The Discord way. Except that the orange heart doesn't even exist on Discord. It's, it's really orange heart phobic. It's dirk phobic. It's dirk phobic. <laughs> it's, honestly. wait... Kira Marius Ganymede Napoleon Dirk Phobic. <laughs> yes, that's my Discord name, in case you were wondering on the podcast. <laughs> um, the survey taker who has read Homestuck eight or more times and has read Ulysses all the way through, uh, who is my best friend, even though we've never spoken, um, said, I think the sheer creativity of the medium it's made on- in is in and of itself enough to make Homestuck revolutionary, not simply interesting or unique. The combination of animation, music, and interactive gaming hadn't been done before Homestuck. Besides that, the shipping mechanics are also incredible and offer so many wor- words for different ways to ship things and that have affected non-Homestuck fandoms. Which is a really good point, because, oh, shipping. It's come so far since the days of Destiel. <laughs> oh boy, and John Locke. And John Locke. This person also started reading homestuck in 2010 which is like very powerful that's so powerful like they suffered through all the pauses this person is a very powerful person yeah we did this um let's look at what did people oh people said we also asked people what their level of interest in our podcast is and the median the the median no not the median the most people 44 5% of people said 3 out of 5, which is why you should never do an odd number when you're asking people to rate things. Yes. Um, It's it's a um, almost normal distribution skewed to the left with a mode and median. Nope, it's skewed to the left. What? Skewed is where the tail is. I don't know. I don't take stats, but there's more people who said they were interested in it. Yes, which tragically means it's skewed to the left, even though that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. I know, terrible. Um, and yeah, around like three is the mode and median level of interest. Yeah. Calculate the standard deviation on that bitch. <laughs> I refuse. I also don't know how. Me neither. I already took my stats final. It's all gone. <laughs> it's all disappeared. It just evaporated. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope that at least, I don't know, one of the people who said they were interested is still listening to the podcast. That yeah, seven, really... seven people said they were five uh, all all the way in interested. Like five out of five time. interested. Yes, five out of five interested, said seven people. So, hope they're listening. And if you were one of those seven people, hey, look at us. We made the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do we want to talk about the shout-out things? Yeah. So, um, we're starting a new promotional thing that's going to be going on for the next couple episodes, I presume, where uh, you can give us a shout out on the social media of your choice. We are present on, what are we present on? Instagram, Tumblr. We don't have an Instagram, but we each individually have Instagrams. Yes, we don't have a Hachu Instagram, but you can, as I said at the beginning of the episode, my Instagram is K-I-Y-Y-E-S, and you can find me there. Or K-I-Y-Y-E-S-A-R-T is my art Instagram. Um, so just tag one of us and um, tag it. I believe it's Hachu Podcast. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, H-T-I-U podcast is the tag for Instagram. So just make a post, tag one of us in the picture, and then put that as your hashtag. And then we will give you a shout bout. Shout bout? Shout about. (laughs) We will give you a shout out in return on the next podcast episode. At the end, we'll just like list, you know, some people. And we we do have a head shoe Twitter, so you can shout us out there too. We have... Tumblr. Tumblr, Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I have a pillow fort if you want to do that. Are there any other social medias? We both have Reddits if you want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's our um, SFS thing. Shout out for shout out. It's going to be going on for a little while. So tell all your friends. 
Yeah. yeah. And in a bit, I'm about to put up our Hachu stickers on my Redbubble account. Oh, yeah. So you can buy some merchandise as soon as that goes up, and I'll, I'll link it somewhere on the Tumblr. Please buy those so that we can get a premium Podbean subscription. <laughs> yes, please buy them because we're running out of Podbean minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very stylish <laughs> stickers. By the way, we did give out free stickers for the, the interviewees at Anime Boston. And if you're going to be at PortCon, we will also be giving out free stickers there, probably. Yes, we will be at PortCon. We convention might be doing a panel. Portland, Maine. Yes, we might be doing a panel. We applied for a panel, but of course we have not heard back yet uh, whether whether or not we have a slot. But if we have a slot, we will definitely let you know about that. We a live show style panel. And yeah, definitely you should all come by and see us either way. Because either way, we'll be at the convention. Yeah. Oh, also about the shout outs. If you want to shout us out on your story, like if you don't want to make a post and have it like, like if you're, if it's doesn't like fit your aesthetic, then you can shout us out on your story as well. Yeah. You can shout us out on your story. Instagram story. Does Facebook have stories? Facebook does have, have stories. stories. Facebook Messenger has stories. No Facebook one looks at them. Stories? What the fuck? Since when? It, the Facebook Messenger app. Whenever you send a photo, it's like, do you want to add this to your story? And I'm like, no. Did everyone just gang up on Snapchat and say you can't have anything special anymore? Like, yep. What the fuck? Yep. Does TikTok have stories now? I've never used TikTok in my life. Me neither. <laughs> I used it back when it was called Musically. Back in the oh, day. Oh, a veteran. I'm a veteran, yeah. I fought in the Musical.ly Wars of 2016. <gasps> there are so many internet conflicts of 2016. Oh, yeah. It was a bad year. It was a bad year. <laughs> Just a bad year overall, I think, for all of us. It was so us. surreal. Um, should I talk about my essay more? Yeah, if you want to give us a little bit more of an overview about your very, very sexy essay. It was not very sexy. I wrote it way too quickly, and it turned it in two days late. It's fine. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to read my second intro paragraph, I think. The first intro paragraph is all, like, the first intro paragraph is, like, what is homestuck? Because my Irish lit professor definitely has no idea. Okay. It's clear that Homestuck has had an enormous impact on fandom culture in person and on the internet. This essay seeks to explore its impact on the literary world and the validity of the comparison between it and Ulysses. The most obvious challenge in tackling this topic is discovering what it means to be a Ulysses. If the only criteria is length, then the discussion is already over. Most people point next to its complexity, but Ulysses' complexity hardly resembles Homestuck's. I've broken down the comparison into several broad categories. Firstly, both Homestuck and Ulysses share a great deal of thematic overlap as they examine mythology through deep intertextual allusions. Secondly, the texts share notoriety for making absolutely no sense whatsoever at first glance. Finally, there's the actual question of being a Ulysses. When people make this claim about any text, they're not only arguing that it's complicated or well-written or long. They're making a statement about its impact on the media sphere it occupies. And then I had paragraphs about mythology, which we can talk about more when we get to when we get to all the Denison stuff and we get God tier stuff in Homestuck. I'm really excited because there's so much I can talk about with mythology there. And then I talked about structural overlap because one of the things, like, if you look up information about either Homestuck or Ulysses, it's all like, oh, it's self-referential. It's about itself, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, and then I had a couple paragraphs about, like, how they changed literature and how Ulysses was super censored all the time because they yes. talk about penises. Um, yeah. Oh, let me read my conclusion paragraph. Is Homestuck the Internet's Ulysses? That question can't fully be answered in an essay or even over the course of a podcast. Sorry, guys. <laughs> However, the two texts share a remarkable breadth of allusions to mythology and sophisticated works of literature, as well as less cultured jokes and references to popular culture. Both stories are famous for their complicated storytelling, either in the form itself or throughout the plot more generally. Their significant influence on the spheres of academia or the internet which they occupy make them arguable peers insofar as they share profound depth, accessible humor, and satisfying intellectual complexity. Yes, satisfying intellectual complexity. Talk dirty to me. <laughs> Episode title. <laughs> yes. Cool. Very, very sexy. I'm very proud of your essay. Yeah, rereading just those pieces at least. I'm like, okay, there's a lot of to be verbs, but it's not as bad as I felt like it was as I wrote it. Okay, is there anything else we need to cover in this bonus episode? No, I think we've covered it all. Next episode, we will return to you with a regular episode, having read... What the fuck are we reading? Episode 6 of Ulysses and Act 4, Part 1 of 
Homestuck, which is page one three five eight to one six six eight. Thank you for listening to this bonus episode of Homestuck: The Internet's Ulysses. See you next week on Hachoo.